Hello, my name is Katarzyna Kowalik, and it is my pleasure today to play this beautiful square piano from 1777, built in London by Adam Bayer. The first piece I'm going to play is Sonata by Johann Christian Bach, who was the 18th child of Johann Sebastian Bach. And in fact, he was called often London Bach as he moved to London in 1762. This sonata I'm going to play is in three movements, Allegro di Molto, Andante di Molto and Minuet.
The next piece I would like to play is Adagio is in, in C major by Mozart, written originally for a glass harmonica. And I chose this piece because there is this instrument in the collection here in the museum. And it is quite a fascinating instrument, consisting of glass balls mounted concentrically. And the sound is produced by rubbing the edges of the balls with wet fingers. So it makes very special sound, which I'm going to try to recreate on this beautiful instrument. I would like to finish with a keyboard sonata composed by Haydn, who was an Austrian composer who spent most of his life at the court of Esterhazy. After 30 years there, he was allowed to, to travel and he came to London several times. He even wrote his famous London symphonies. He was a great friend and mentor of Mozart. And this sonata I would like to play is in four movements, Allegro, Minuet, Andante and Allegro.
Well, um, first time I started to playing the harpsichord was during my piano studies uh, back in Warsaw. And it was because I remember I worked on the piece um, by Brahms. This was the variation based on Handel. And um, this is a massive half an hour piano piece. And I was just curious, what's the origin, what's the inspiration behind this piece? And uh, that's that's how I come across this original Handel suite. And then I was just curious, how would that sound on the harpsichord after it being played on, on the piano? And that's really the very beginning, how it all started. I, I Then I decided to take on second study harpsichord during my piano master's. And yeah, that's how it all began. Then I moved to London. I studied historical performance here in, at Guildhall. And I had the chance to play beautiful um, antique instruments in all sorts of collections uh, in Fenton House, in the Handel House here, um, in, at the Horniman, at, in Hatchland Park. Um, and that's, that was a really wonderful journey. Oh, it is a completely different experience. Absolutely. Uh, it is much more fragile and delicate instrument. So you wouldn't uh, play it the same way as you would play the modern piano. Um, I think it's closer, the technique and the, the touch is closer to playing the harpsichord rather than modern piano. So uh, adapting uh, to, to, to this uh, touch uh, was, uh, it took a, a little while. Apart from that, uh, also the mechanism using the stops and the pedal, which is completely different than in the modern, uh, modern pianos. Um, so for example, in the modern piano, the damper pedal, um, this option we do have on this instrument, of course, but it's, uh, it's activated by pressing these buttons here. And um, also the fact that you can split this stop. So having the damper option um, just for half of the keyboard and you can choose whichever half you want. This is quite an interesting opportunity to explore, which you don't have on the modern piano. So I must say when I was preparing for this concert, I was playing on my upright piano at home, which is quite old, but not as old as this instrument. But I was playing with pedal on just to get used to this aura of sound. Um, yeah, but I, I really love uh, every opportunity of playing antique instruments. You can learn so much uh, from them. Right, so I thought it would be nice to play the music which would have been played on this particular instrument, um, as this instrument is from 1777, so I tried to stick to the same sort of period and also choose the pieces which would work on the range of the keyboard, which is quite na narrow. Um, but also I try to uh, make a link between the pieces, between the composers I chose to play today. So um, Johann um, Christian Bach, um, was um, in London. And then Mozart also was traveling to London. Um, Johann Christian influenced Mo Mozart a lot. Um, and then Hein was a student of Mozart and good friend. They um, um, Allegedly, they played quartets together. Um, so somehow I thought this, this program, these pieces are linked to, to each other, but also the composers are linked to London. So they are linked to the instrument. So that was the idea behind it. I used the lid swell by pressing this pedal underneath. And I used it in the minuet, which had uh, two sections, the major and minor section. So I thought it would be nice to show the difference and contrast between them by uh, using this stop. So uh, when the lid went up, uh, the sound was a bit louder. And then it, when it went down, the sound was muted. So it was more quiet and more intimate sound for the minor section. I was using um, different stops um, to achieve these uh, colors or coming out from this beautiful instrument. Not only the pedal for, for the dynamic difference, but also um, the damper stop for 
uh, changing the the color of half of the keyboard when I needed it for the for the treble register for the melody to have a little bit more resonance. Um, I also used the lute stop uh, for one of the minuets, uh, which created a little bit muted sound. Um, so yeah, I thought it would be interesting to demonstrate all the colors uh, possible to achieve on this instrument. Let me demonstrate different stops. So a part of the pedal regulating the lid swell, I was using the stops which are located here on this side of the piano. And this first button is activating the, the damper swell, but only for the upper half of the keyboard. So if you could hear the bottom part is sounding sort of normal and the, the, the upper part of the keyboard it's more sustained sound because the dampers are lifted. And then the same effect I could do for the second half, for the bottom half of the, of the keyboard. So now the bass notes, the bass strings are more resonant and more sustained. And there is also a uh, lute stop or sordine, which is um, muting the strings slightly, creating this sort of sound. I think the best thing about playing the historic, historical instruments is that every instrument is different and unique. Um, very often when you play modern instruments, they sound very similar and they are very similar to touch, uh, whereas every antique instrument uh, is totally different and it's a great lesson for every player, the lesson of touching, the lesson of listening and controlling the instrument. So I think that's really uh, precious experience. <laughs>